So I have just completed the East Blue Saga. Yo, what's good? It's a boy, do the views and heavy spoilers for the East Blue Saga of One Piece, basically the first 54-ish episodes, you have been warned. So at the time of this recording, I have just finished the very highly anticipated Gear 5 episode. And after watching this episode, I decided to make the decision to go back and re-watch all of One Piece. I'm not gonna lie, watching the rest of the Wano arc was a little confusing because I forgot a whole lot of things that happened in the early arc so I needed to go back and re-watch and refresh my memories. I was a little surprised to find out that this show is really old. It came out in the 90s, it started in 1999 and the saga ended in 2001. And what do I think of this saga? I love the pacing in this arc. Oh my gosh dude, the pacing is just so nice. I mean when you compare the pacing of this arc compared to the recent arcs, it's night and day dude. I feel like it's not too fast and not too slow, it's just the right amount. Although I must admit that Barate did feel a little bit sluggish sometimes but we'll get to that later. I think from Usopp's arc all the way up until the end of this arc where they're at Logtown that's when the show is really interesting and engaging. I really enjoyed the entire Usopp arc in Syrup Village. His really wholesome relationship with Kaya. I think Captain Kuro was the second best villain of the entire East Blue Saga. How slimy and nasty he was. How he pretty much tricked Kaya and made her hate Usopp. I got pretty damn emotional when she slapped Usopp when he was trying to get her on her side and to make her believe him. I was expecting Captain Kuro to have some sort of redemption. Maybe despite him wanting to get Kaya's money and wealth, he deep down did really care for her but no, he still cared for the money more than the girl and he was willing to kill her which was pretty dark dude. Although that butler that was attacked by Captain Kuro, I thought he was dead and I think it would have been a lot more impactful if he did die. We also get more into Usopp's backstory and past, how his mother got sick and ill and left the world and it was pretty damn sad dude. And it sort of made you feel a little bit angry towards his father because he kind of abandoned this kid when he was probably feeling really down in the dumps and all alone. But I do at the same time feel like this is probably why he had to leave. He probably didn't know what to do or how to be a father to Usopp. So he just left him with the village and decided to just sail the seas. I'm sure even he feels a lot of pain for what happened to his wife. We then go to the Barate arc where we meet Sanji, the cook chef. And while I didn't quite enjoy this arc as much as the previous arc, I really did like some of the battles and emotional moments like the Zora versus Hawkeye battle. Just the way Hawkeye sliced him up like that. Oh my gosh, man. Zora is just on a whole nother level of awesomeness. I was also quite surprised that they mentioned other warlords in this arc, like Jinbei. I was like, oh wow, they're mentioning him so early on. But I do feel like the high point or Depending on how you look at it, the low point of this arc was Sanji's backstory, how he and Zeph were pretty much stranded on this island and despite One Piece being this happy-go-lucky, very bright and vibrant, cartoony looking world, I like how it also shows you that it has some of those elements but at the same time it is quite grounded and it has a lot of real life issues. I had a huge range of emotions after watching the really happy-go-lucky We Are theme song and then the episode is basically Sanji starving to death. It's a pretty jarring contrast between the theme song and the actual episode. How Zeph pretty much tricked Sanji into thinking that he had food, but in reality it was just jewels. And I like the whole sort of message behind that. He has all the money in the world, but he can't spend it on anything and it's worthless. I don't know dude, that was all really intense and just seeing his starved body, oh my gosh. That was horrifying to watch dude. I wonder how they're gonna portray that in the live action version. And Sanji before this moment, how he used to waste food and was disgusted with his fellow chefs eating the scraps from the restaurant. Now Sanji has a sort of better appreciation for food. Even if they are scraps, he will never let any food go to waste. I love how when he's about to leave with Luffy and go on his journey to find it all blue, all of his chefs want him out, but they're all pretending and then he just starts breaking down and crying 
crying, Frank and Zaf, and they all break down and cry and show their love and appreciation for the dude. One Piece really knows how to pull out the heartstrings, mate. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about the arc was the villain. He was quite bland and boring and I wasn't really all about him. He just felt like a underdeveloped version of Smokey. Not a good villain at all. But I did like the side characters and that one subordinate character. I found him more interesting than the villain. How he was starving and then he betrayed Sanji by bringing the villain to his restaurant and trashing the place up. But despite all that, he still had an appreciation for Sanji and what he did for him. How Sanji fed him and saved him and he couldn't kill him. Arlong Park is probably the best arc in the One Piece East Blue Saga. One, Nami's backstory is possibly the most tragic of the entire Straw Hat crew so far. Sanji's was pretty bad, but man, Nami had to watch her stepmother get shot by Arlong and she had to serve under him for years, practically being a slave, suffering so much emotional and physical abuse. The thing with Nami is that even before this arc, I actually liked her as a character, how she was a petty thief, but you also got the sense that she had this sort of passion for others at the same time and you love Nami even more in this arc and just you feel so bad for her and what she had to go through and a scene of her stabbing her arm with that knife trying to get rid of that tattoo oh my gosh I did not expect them to go that far with the violence it was a bit too much for me and I got a bit choked up watching it mate Luffy stops her and she just tells Luffy to please help her and she's just at the lowest points in her life so far all of her villagers are going to meet their deaths towards Arlong and she doesn't know what to do she's lost all her money all her hope and dreams are gone and she only has Luffy and the Straw Hats to rely on Arlong is definitely one of the most vicious evil villains of pretty much the entire East Blue Saga I mean compared to the villains in the future we will see but for now he is the big bad it's a bit jarring watching certain movies nowadays and watching villains but they seem to be more sympathetic and morally grey Arlong is just all bad there is just no good within him he's just evil he's bad to the bone he cares for his crewmates but that's it he's a selfish arrogant son of a gun dude so it was so satisfying watching luffy break his nose and just tear his entire palace to smithereens crashing and destroying nami's slavery bedroom and declaring to nami in the world that he and her are friends it's such a heartwarming moment one thing i like about nami is that unlike sakura she doesn't do things that come across annoying slight spoilers for Naruto Shippuden but when Naruto defeated Pain in the Pain arc the entire village were celebrating him and you have Sakura who's begging Naruto to pretty much save the day and all that and she confronts him and she smacks him in the head and I was like dude what are you doing cut the dude some slack and she hugs him after that which is nice but she didn't have to hit Naruto you know like it was a bit uncalled for Nami could have done the exact same she could have hit Luffy and called him an idiot but no she gave him his straw hat and she gave him a high five and I kind of like that. She respects Luffy and what he had to do. Unlike a certain pink haired girl. Ugh. I could make a whole video on Sakura but today it's about Nami and we love Nami and her Namis. Speaking of Nami, I really do love how the entire village tricked Nami into thinking that they all hated her for abandoning her but in reality they all knew what she was going through and it was pretty sad and touching you know. And then we move to Logtown which is the last arc in the East Blue Saga. It's a pretty chilled arc to be honest. Zoro gets his swords, he meets a girl that looks just like the girl from his past and Luffy finally gets to see the place where Goldie Rogers was born and the place he was killed in. Very poetic in a way. This arc we get introduced to the awesome bad arse that is Smoker. The better version of Don Krieg. Don Krieg in my opinion is like a $2 Smokey. I mean what is he doing? I mean no I'm not all about that character. He sucks. We get to meet Tashigi who in my opinion is one of the better written female characters of One Piece. But I like how she's all clumsy and clueless. She reminds me of Velma in a way. How she's just losing her glasses and just can't find them anywhere. She even sounds like Velma. I wonder if it's the same voice actress. I really enjoyed the Luffy moment where he gets kidnapped by Buggy and he's about to be executed and he realizes that he's about to die and he smiles. A part of me sort of died on the inside when he was smiling because I felt like then and there he truly felt like he was about to die and I kind of felt sorry for him. He wasn't going to achieve his goals or dreams and get the One Piece. I felt sad for Luffy. I also like how this entire saga started with Buggy and it's ended with Buggy. Fortunately, 
unfortunately our boy Luffy is alive and well. But the biggest surprise of this arc and probably my favourite part of this arc was Usopp's fight with Daddy Madison. I like how he's so scared and terrified to fight him at first but then he discovers that Madison met his father a couple of years ago and how his father pretty much could have just killed him then and there but he noticed that he had a daughter which in my opinion is a really insufferable little brat but Usopp's dad kept him alive just so that he can go back to his daughter. Usopp gets the strength and bravery to fight Madison and it was pretty good it was a nice development for Usopp. The arc also foreshadows things of the future like we see Dragon but yeah that's pretty much the entire saga. I didn't really talk about the Romance Dawn arc because it's the weakest arc in the entire story not much happens it's just villain of the week and plus it's my least favorite arc with Luffy. I really feel like Luffy is a bit strange and he acts a little bit out of character. He isn't the Luffy we all know and love from Arlong Park onwards. I feel like he's a bit aloof in this arc. I did not like the line where he tells Kobe that, oh I hate cowards like you Kobe. I thought that was a bit extreme and the way he was beating him up just to show to the marines that, hey I'm a pirate and Kobe is innocent. Yes, he did that to protect Kobe. But could he not have told Kobe before? It was a little bit, it felt a bit too harsh and cruel in my opinion. Luffy does another thing in Alabasta that I'm a little bit mixed on with a certain character. We'll get to that when we get to that Alabaster arc but yeah Luffy in East Blue is just very strange. He's not the Luffy that I like in the later arcs. He seems a little bit more harsh in his words and his actions in a way but at the same time it does make him an interesting person and it does make the story interesting I won't lie. So yeah I enjoyed the East Blue saga. I will admit the pacing particularly in Barate. There were so many shots of the men in the water looking at the battle and just Don Krieg as a character was a bit lame. I felt like he was a beta version of what Smoker was going to be like in my opinion but yeah I enjoyed the arc. I liked the Usopp arc. I liked the Nami backstories. All the children backstory in this arc are so intense but I'll give East Blue Saga an 8.5 out of 10 and I think I'll give it an, an A-. minus. I still think the best arc is the Arlong Park in this but I could be wrong. Tell me in the comments down below what you guys thought of the East Blue Saga arc. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Which arc within this saga is your favourite? Tell me. Like this video, subscribe for more One Piece reactions, reviews, comparisons, breakdowns, rankings and more. But thank you for watching and as always a boy dude review signing out.